Hey everybody, and welcome to another jazz tutorial. This tutorial is about Manova. Yep, there's gonna be a Manova board on this one. That is the multivariate analysis of variance. And so this is a slightly more complicated uh, set of analyses, and we're gonna dive right in. Now, so I'm currently using JASP 0.14.1, and we are going to jump into this. So let's open up some data and get started. Alrighty, so I have opened up a um, Manova file. Um, you can see here up here that it says Manova. And uh, I downloaded this from the UCLA Institute for Digital Research and Education Statistical Consulting website. They have freely available um, th freely available data sets to use in various um, statistics. And they, they developed their, their course specifically around SPSS. But because JASP can open SPSS files, we're just going to go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so MANOVA. Why would you use a MANOVA instead of doing multiple ANOVAs? Well, here we have a data set that is very simple. It's got a group, one, two, and three, and what appear to be three different measurements, useful, difficulty, and importance. Now, you could do three different one-way ANOVAs if you had a, a, an idea, if you had a theoretical background that said that usefulness, difficulty, and importance were not related to one another. Because if you do those ANOVAs, by themselves, you're saying that those dependent variables didn't really relate to one another, and so I'm, gonna, I'm fine, theoretically, by doing these tests by themselves. However, if usefulness, difficulty, and importance are all interconnected, then you will want to do a MANOVA, multivariate analysis of variance. And so you are going to see whether or not this group, three groups of variables, is going to be explained by differences in our group variable, our independent variable. So what a MANOVA does is it basically collapse, collapses these three variables into one new linear combination of a dependent variable to then regress the um, group variable on, which is great. There are a number of advantages to doing a MANOVA instead of an ANOVA. So um, first of all, it's easier to detect effects in MANOVA when you have multiple variables that are, are in, in, in related. And, um, and I think one of the more important effects uh, effects slash uh, advantages of using MANOVA over multiple ANOVAs is inflating type 1 error. So just like doing multiple t-tests isn't a good idea when you can do an, an ANOVA, right? If you have a, here we have three groups in our ANOVA, we, would, we, we don't want to do three different t-tests on, let's say, just usefulness by. And so it's the same situation from moving from t-tests to ANOVA. You don't want to inflate type 1 error. You don't want to inflate alpha and detect an effect that's not supposed to be there, right? That would be a type 1 uh, alpha on multiple DVs that are likely correlated, okay, that are likely correlated. So we expect to see some overlap in one or more of, or two or more of these three DVs. So how do we do this in JASP? Well, it's fairly simple. <laughs> you go up to ANOVA because we're just going to put an N in front of it. We click on that and you can see MANOVA is right here. You click on MANOVA and it is asking for multiple DVs now. Now, one thing to note is that in MANOVA, the DVs do all have to be continuous variables. They all have to be continuous variables. You cannot do... Um, a MANOVA with a DV that has uh, that is either uh, nominal or ordinal. So they all have to be scalar variables continuous. So we're going to put all three of these into our dependent box. Now, when we do ANOVA, there is only space for one variable in this box. So they expanded this to allow as many vari dependent variables as you need. And group, uh, a group is being read as a uh, as a um, scalar variable here. So let's go ahead and change that. So we click on this and we click on nominal. That changes the group. Then we can go back over here and now the availability of putting it into a fixed factor is there. Uh, if you quickly saw before I changed it, it wasn't going to let me put it into this fixed fix factor box. Now, there's not a lot of stuff we get to do with Mano with this Manova module. It is um, less feature rich than ANOVA or even ANCOVA in this case, or even repeated measures um, uh, ANOVA here in the repeated measure measures model. So we only get um, our model. So if we had a factorial, we can um, make sure we get our main effects and our interactions. So there's nothing to do there uh, if you only have a one-way MANOVA. And then under additional options, um, you can choose what test you want. So you can, by default, PLI is your default test, and that's going to give you um, your, basically your statistic value. Um, now, if you're coming from SPSS, you probably have seen all four of these. So we're going to check all four of these. And uh, it looks like um, for purposes of separating each of these, we get um, four different tables, which is nice. We can also get our ANOVA tables. That's going to heat up some thing. We're going to skip the uh, maximum P ratio. And then, of course, we want to go ahead and get our assumption checks. So homogeneity of covariance matrices. This lets us know if we are doing well on our covariance because, again, we are doing multiple DVs. So we need to see how well they are um, in variance to one you know, how, how, how close their variances are to one another. And then we're also going to go ahead and get multivariate normality. And uh, you see multivariate normality if you were to plot these three DVs on a plot and then, like, drew ovals around them to see what their shapes were on each independent axis. So we would have three axes here and X 
X and two Ys for useful difficulty and importance, and we would be able to see um, what their shapes look like. But we're just going to get a table here for this one. So assumption checks. Uh, so for covariance matrices, we get boxes M, and it's, it's a chi-squared test, and everything's looking good because a non-significant value here means that I do not have a violation. Now, the shapiro wilt test for multivariate normality uh, might have an issue. Uh, one or more of these uh, variables may be non-normal, but I think if we were to make take a conservative route on violation, that we would probably be fine with a 0.01 p-value. Uh, the 0.91 is pretty good shapiro wilt value, so I think we'll, we'll go ahead and assume that this data set is fine. I mean, I did get it from a <laughs> statistical consulting uh, website uh, for UCLA, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's fine. Now, in the, uh, as part of the as far as the other output goes, we have our Palai test, our Wilkes test, our hoteling lolly test. I don't, I think it's hoteling, um, hoteling. Uh, I don't, I'm not entirely sure uh, how to pronounce that. So drop that in the comments if you know how to pronounce that. You can drop some phonetics for me. And then the Roy test, um, which is the Roy's largest root if you are coming from uh, SPSS. That's how it's described in S the output in SPSS. So we have our Palai test. And so here is our approximate F value, but the trace value is typically speaking what you would use. And so we have our group trace 0.477, and we're going to get our degrees of freedom, 6 and 58. And of course, it looks like it's significant here. Great. And then residuals here is just our error term for that um, for that particular test. And it's the same in all of these tests because there is it is uh, n minus uh, n minus the amount of DVs I believe you have, or n minus uh, no n minus the amount of groups, and we have three groups, so n minus three. And uh, so Wilkes test. This is the one that I was trained on. This is the one that I use. Wilkes lambda is the value that you would report here if you were reporting this in an APA paper. Um, that Wilkes lambda is 0.52, and of course, that would be a significant value. And you get an approximate F value for these, and this you can compare this approximate F value and this one and this one and this one to Fs that you've seen in one way or just univariate ANOVAs. Those Fs are approximately the same, and so you can make the same estimates uh, of your p-value, so depending on how large it is. So you can see Roy's largest root here, the approximate F is 8.6. You have an F of 8.6, you're likely going to see a p-value that is good enough to say that there is a place there. Now, each of these have their uh, each of these have their uh, place in output. It depends on what you are looking for. I am not going to go through all of them because that would that would probably make this video twice as long. Now, you you can do this um, by getting those ANOVAs singularly. So these are three separate one-way ANOVAs, okay? And um, you can see that uh, by themselves, there might be issues. So um, by themselves, useful, not significant. Uh, there's no significant differences between groups on just the useful variable. Difficulty, the three groups, there is definitely no difference by itself. And then group, importance, there is not a difference between the three groups. So combining these three variables uh, across our three groups actually makes a lot of sense because we can say that using, uh, I'm going to use Wilkes Lambda here, using either the F or the Wilkes Lambda to describe the single linear DV, the combination DV, uh, we can see that there is a difference on this uh, particular set of instruments or on this instrument and whether or not it's useful, difficult, or, difficult or important. But there is a difference there among the three different groups. Now, what does this mean in, in practice? Well, the the researcher randomly assigns 33 subjects to one of three groups. First group received technical dietary information on an online website. Group two saw the same information, but from a nurse practitioner, while group three saw the information on a video made by the same nurse practitioner. So either on an online website, uh, in, in person from a nurse practitioner, or from a video from that nurse practitioner. And so the ratings were on the presentation itself. So how difficult was the um, dietary information based on the presentation, its usefulness, and its importance. So that is um, how you would read that. So combining difficulty, usefulness, and importance gives you a big picture on the delivery method in this particular uh, example, right? So which is better? Well, then we'd have to see, then we'd have to see, um, we'd have to look at means, which is not something you can do in this module. You might want to grab uh, descriptive statistics and compare means here. Um, and then I can split by group to get more information. So um, among the three, so there's 11 per group. Among the three, we can see means um, in group one, usefulness was higher than the other two groups. So group one was the online website. Um, group two, uh, difficulty was a little bit higher though on the website. And then importance was more important for the online website. So it, it's clear here that um, getting information presented in online versus from the nurse practitioner in person or on video, there are some issues there, but that is the confluence of those issues among the three groups. So that is how you do a MANOVA, and this was specifically a one-way MANOVA in JASP. Again, you'll probably have to do the module itself and then complement it with some descriptive statistics. Uh, if you like this content, please consider leaving a like. Please leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down in the comment section. Consider subscribing if you want to see more of this content. And thank you for watching.